and what a wonderful exercise in empathy um, with what the startup scene uh, has to deal with. It's been a long time uh, since I was at a startup. Um, actually, I'll sort of go back to that. Uh, I've been working in security research and development for over 20 years. Um, I started coming out of school uh, right here in Toronto with Bell working in telepresence. Uh, and then joined a little company, it was about 40 people. Uh, it wasn't called Blackberry then, it was called Research in Motion. Um, and we grew to 20,000 uh, over the 16 years that I was there. Um, so I've, I, I do remember some of the scrappy days. Um, from there, I, I took a bit of a hiatus uh, and worked at Sony uh, down, in, uh, down in Los Angeles, Sony Pictures, uh, and then uh, went to Google uh, and, and Motorola. I'm now with... Oh, there we go. Uh, and NCC Group. Uh, we, we provide uh, consultancy services, full spectrum consultancy services um, in, in the cybersecurity to everything from risk management and governance uh, to product security. Um, my team specializes in product security. Uh, most of us are ex Blackberry guys, um, and we're in Waterloo, Canada. I sort of heard um, sort of the, some military contractor stuff happening in Waterloo. That's pretty exciting. Um, this isn't a sales pitch. So that, that was just to kind of let you know uh, who we are, about 2,000 people worldwide. All right, so very quickly, uh, we're going to go through a few things. Uh, why you should care about cybersecurity, um, sort of where you start, and then sort of taking a look at from the inside out uh, how you might structure your thinking. And then sort of if your planning goes well, uh, it should carry you through when things go sideways. Um, the TLDR on this, uh, which is to say, if you want to take a couple things away, I, I don't want to sort of water this down too, too much, uh, but why spend uh, time and money on security? Uh, well, because you're a target, um, and people are getting hit, and it's costing a lot of money. Um, you probably can't afford not to. So threats, the threats are real. If you're watching the news, you'll have seen it. Um, everything from DDoS, if, if you remember Mirai, uh, that was a worm that sort of infected uh, mainly webcams and IoT devices. It took down chunks of the internet, like serious stuff. Uh, Amazon is having problems with this. Ransomware, uh, if anyone's heard of WannaCry, probably a lot of people. It wasn't just hitting the UK NHS, it was hitting businesses. Uh, so ransomware is real. Website defacement, oh my gosh. Uh, what peasant uh, anonymous kind of lacked at some point for a lizard crew? Uh, exploitative, um, DDoS bots. So if you actually have a company that makes IoT thingies, Something like Mirai probably is relevant to you. Um, Bitcoin and altcoin money. There's real money in this. If, if you sort of see um, <coughs> the value of Bitcoins or altcoins are, um, mining them makes a lot of sense. Except for the fact that it takes a lot of compute and it takes a lot of power. So why not use someone else's compute resource? So that's what some people are looking at. Staging other attacks, you could look at Mirai again. Um, fraud and theft, uh, taking your secrets, taking your business plans. Um, Taking employee or customer information, um, stealing your services, email dumps, um, sort of as we've seen a lot of uh, with, um, uh, with, with Anonymous and WikiLeaks. They hit people big and small. These are most of the big companies. Um, the small ones you, you might not have heard of. Um, some actually ended up going out of business. Um, but everything from TechCrunch to Google to HP Gary, they're a security company. Um, Uber, gosh, poor Uber. Uh, they, they've been in the news a lot, um, but they, they've also been lacked a ton. Email dumps, Podesta Clinton, anyone? Um, marketplace fraud, StubHub, wow. Uh, and uh, ransomware, that this was pretty big news just a couple weeks ago. Stats, 50% um, of small and medium businesses uh, reported having at least one major cybersecurity incident in 2016. This is probably bigger than some of the companies. This is 100 to 1,000 employees. We'll talk about smaller in a minute. Um, average cost, close to $900,000 um, direct financial impact from the breach, and almost a million dollars in additional costs getting back to business. That's like $1.8, $1.9 million. Um, that can kill companies. Um, and uh, actually on the next slide, if I just jump to it, 60% um, of small companies that suffer a cyber attack are out of business within six months. This is from the US National Cybersecurity Alliance, um, a stat, this was from last year, I believe. Just kind of hopping back, so that's sobering. 
Um, why is this happening? Um, bad password hygiene and email. Uh, the, you know, so before we even get to product stuff, um, this, this is really a matter of uh, if, if we want to boil it down to the very first steps, the most impactful things that you can do, patch your systems, uh, use systems that can be patched, um, have your employees use a decent password, different on every system, that sucks, uh, but you might want to use a, a password keeper app uh, for that. Um, they don't have to be complex passwords in the sense of having special characters, big letters, small letters, I know that's what people say. Um, you do the maths and you can actually come up with similar amounts of entropy from just chaining words together. You know, banana, turnpike, blender, wolverine. Right, um, that, that actually has sort of, and, and you can sort of piece this together in a mnemonic. I wouldn't recommend sort of taking a passage from the book. Um, that, that'd probably be weaker. 63% um, confirmed breaches traced to weak default or stolen passwords. Stolen passwords, uh, kind of a problem if you haven't secured your service or your infrastructure properly. Verizon, uh, this was last year, uh, found 30%, fully 30%, one third of phishing emails are opened. And, uh, and of those, 12% of people clicked the link, opened the attachment. Um, just run numbers at some point, one of, your, one of your people is going to do this, and it's going to hurt. Uh, Cybersecurity incidents uh, rose by almost 40% in 2015, according to IDG. 20%, this, okay, so this is an old stat. In 2013 to 2014, uh, it was reported that 20% of small business in Canada fell victim to cyber crimes in the preceding 12 months. Uh, these are cyber crimes that resulted in the exfiltration of data. Um, uh, Symantec's uh, Internet Security Trends Report uh, for 2016 um, reported that 43% of cyber attacks were targeting small business. Now, um, like any good habit, uh, it's good to start really. Uh, retrofitting security, just like trying to lose weight or get healthy, is harder the longer you leave it. Um, you can sort of see with the camera there, uh, kind of not a great idea. Um, you're stuck with what you have. Uh, so where do we start? Um, we work out from the center. Um, as I said, I, I kind of gave the, the couple of things uh, which would sort of be, uh, well, culture and plan is about ensuring that your business is bought into the fact that this is important, this is relevant, matters. Um, in a startup, everything's competing for your time. Everything's competing for your money. You're trying to grow. You may have investors. Um, the investors may be your family. Um, so mom may not sort of make you dinner if you don't sort of return uh, some profit. Um, sort of com coming from there, so you have to be bought into the fact that this is real, this is important. Hopefully that doesn't take a whole lot of convincing. Um, and then sort of securing your, your internals. Uh, that, that is, in fact, where a lot of the breaches are coming from. On top of that, uh, service and products and ensuring that you've got some preparedness to help manage the cost of an incident after it happens. So that, that's kind of the, the general way we'll look at it. Um, but your culture underpins everything. If you don't care, if sort of the senior management of the startup doesn't care, everyone who comes after is going to pick up on that. Um, Again, early. Early is better. Um, periodic training, even if it's just sharing with the new employees uh, those, those three basic items and the fact that uh, you, you care um, to sort of be aware of the news, observe, question, report, create a pause point uh, whenever a trust decision is, is happening. Just think. Issue the culture of um, Historically, security organizations were the can't people, or the don't people, um, or the oh my god you screwed up people. Um, that, that doesn't really work in, in a startup, it doesn't work in large organizations. Uh, Security's fought a long hard battle uh, over the past number of years uh, because of this dark time. Um, really what we want to do is encourage all of the employees, all of the users, uh, to check with the coworker or management or the security at um, address in your company if they have dead. Uh, if you've shared your security threatscape, that's kind of your list of business relevant threats uh, with your employees, hopefully that will sensitize them, uh, they're brought in, and will sort of let you know if something smells funny. 
uh, sort of human instincts are sort of contrary to what the email clicking thing would say. Actually, not too bad. Okay, so Tartscape mapping. Uh, why would you do this? Uh, you don't want to spend more money defending something than the loss of it would cost you. Um, which is kind of a really twisty way of saying you want to prioritize your investments and not overspend. Um, how do we do this? There's a really simple, uh, sort of a really simple formula um, that a lot of people use, which is essentially sort of determine your expectation of loss, which is how likely something's to happen. You can use industry stats times the monetary impact. That's going to depend on, on your business and the type of resource. <coughs> Once you have this, you can estimate sort of the, the cost or, or the value uh, that you would expect to lose, um, sort of given any current mitigations. You can recalculate that once you've sort of got some mitigations in place. Hopefully this all lines up. Um, this, very standard. Identify your threats, assess your risks, design a way to sort of handle them, sort of execute that plan, sort of review that's working rather than sort of be, uh, kind of be built round and round. Um, common threats, um, I, I think I sort of touched on many of them. Um, customer account data breach is a big one. Um, if, if you're a service company, um, backdoors and implants um, sort of affect everyone. Website defacement, sort of mainly trust issues. Um, but yeah, any and all of these things. Uh, this is a good starting list when, when you're creating your threatscape. Um, so you, you sort of plan a pragmatic defense from how do we detect this to can we prevent it to what do we do if it happens. Um, You've got a plan for your eventual, eventual failure. No matter how much effort you put into this, it's no matter of when, uh, if, it's when. Um, so really, you're, you're looking to sort of make the fall hurt a little less. Um, anything that you can't remediate, you can insure. Um, a lot of companies are a little surprised to find that they can get cybersecurity insurance. So that, that's actually sort of a good safety net. Um, Sony Pictures would have been in a world of hurt if they didn't, an even bigger world of hurt if they didn't have cybersecurity insurance. So, working up the stack. People, engage them, educate them, empower them. Um, you want to create that mental pause at trust points. Trust points like, do I trust that the CFO would email me the quarterly report when I'm a developer? Well, that seems weird. Um, probably shouldn't do that. You focus on the high importance sites. Email security. Um, don't trust a lot of your email, essentially. Um, well, don't really open the links. Create a culture where you're not actually sending these important things around. Um, and you know, the you know, and hopefully that sort of seeps into everyone. The importance of good passwords that aren't ever reused. So many people reuse passwords. You pick a good one and you want to use it everywhere because it's a good one, right? Um, no. Um, you can use that good password to Lock a password keeper. LastPass is one of them. I think they're free. Uh, there's um, there's one that's based here in Toronto that I like, and the name is escaping me. But there's a whole bunch of them. Some open source, some free, some less free. Um, they're super worthwhile, uh, and they can sort of generate pretty decent passwords. Rotation. You hear people say rotate it every three months. If you've got a good password and you're not reusing it, that's probably a little less important. Entropy is important but it isn't necessarily best served by complexity. I think I mentioned that before. You don't need funny characters and, and a big mix. There are other ways that are more human friendly. Um, other things with people, sort of drill into them. So when you're not on the corporate network, you're on an unsafe network. Always use your VPN. Um, and frankly, avoid public Wi-Fi like the plague, which kind of makes me feel a bit like an imposter because I did use some Wi-Fi here. But I did use my VPN. Uh, your office, uh, so many startups, very open culture. Don't even lock your door. Lock your door. Um, have guests buzz in. You can use the video doorbells. Um, sign your guests in. Keep a log. Uh, if you're using one of the electronic locks where you can sort of send a visitor a code to get in, that may give you an eye trail. Um, this is super basic, really, stuff. Video surveillance in reception common areas. Um, and consider having your cleaners come during business hours. This is something that NCC Group does that I haven't seen in too many companies, which is to say the cleaners come through during the day when people are there. Um, and it, it actually makes it um, sort of a little less kind of nerve 
wrenching. We can actually keep the office very locked down when, when people aren't there. Never, ever, ever allow your cleaners access to your server equipment rooms. Uh, anything that's sort of holding your very valuable information. You can clean it yourself. It's not that bad. Um, infrastructure and assets. Just good systems. What do I mean by good system? I mean something that's current, gets patched regularly, and has a good track record. Um, you know, and, and that's going to vary depending on sort of laptop, mobile, uh, but, but you probably have an idea of some of the things uh, that, that are good. Uh, Windows 10 better than Windows XP. Um, Mac OS 10 pretty darn good. Um, in phones, I like iOS. I also like Android. I worked on Android phones for a while. Android, oh, looks like it's going to be pretty good. If you're going to get an Android phone, oh, for God's sakes, um, get, get one that's made by Google, like the Google Pixel or Google uh, Nexus devices uh, because they have the longest um, patch, the fastest patches and are supported for the longest time. Um, established controls and visibility. You need to know what's on your network. You need to know what your employees are using. Uh, and you need to know that uh, these things are patched. And break protection helps. Uh, backup, backup, backup. Uh, when things go wrong, you're going to want to be able to return to service. Uh, test those restores or, or the cutover. Uh, periodically, don't co locate your servers. So if you get a backup server on the same network as your primary server and someone gets in there, you, you can be hosed. Um, uh, in, in terms of uh, administrative access, limit it. People shouldn't be using root or admin on their own boxes, let alone your servers, unless they have a really good reason to do so. Monitor everything. Uh, this is going to help with forensics. And in terms of pen tests and scans, uh, there are open source tools. You can scan your network orders uh, however much you like. I'd say weekly. Um, a lot of it is point two. Uh, and some would say pen test biannually or quarterly. This does cost some money uh, to have someone else come in and do it. I think it can be well worthwhile. SANS.org is uh, the resource that I recommend, not just for critical security controls. They have tons of reading on security best practice. They also have some certifications that are actually not crap. Um, internals and uh, infrastructure part two. Uh, if you're a small company, you're probably not going to be able to secure things better than Google or Microsoft. Um, this is one of the reasons why I like Google Apps for business or Office 365. In the current uh, political climate, I can understand why people sort of may be a bit nervous. Uh, I do believe that uh, sort of Amazon, Microsoft, and Google are all sort of taking some steps to make their services available uh, within country hosting. I can't say that for sure, um, you know, but, but frankly, um, contrary to what we might have seen in some of the Snowden leaks, I don't think that, uh, that NSA is, is targeting us nearly as much as all the other people. Um, so patch, 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 turn on your automatic patching. Um, for browsers, I like Chrome, it automatically updates itself. Um, have a standard configuration so you're not trying to manage a crazy weirdo fleet. This has to do with understanding what's on your network. Um, and endpoint <coughs> protection product is just going to help you with that fleet management. Um, well, we'll just kind of skip through some of this. Um, you're, you're going to want to sort of, at some point, fairly early on, um, probably when you're more than five people, less than 30, uh, have a named individual. Uh, who's going to be responsible for ensuring that you're doing some security stuff. It doesn't have to be their full-time job. Uh, probably when you pass 30 people, it's when you want to have a full-time security person. They don't have to be a great beard. They just have to be someone who can read, who can learn, who is technical, and um, that, that can be focused on this. Um, again, remember, that's what the security very difficult. You're putting lipstick on a pig. It doesn't work. Well, it does work, but yeah, uh, not really. Um, services, uh, again, cloud platform. Uh, if you're using something like Amazon to host your service, uh, or sort of Microsoft Azure, or Google Cloud Services, um, I just use Amazon because most people think about it. Uh, they offer great deployment guidance, and great controls, and fault tolerance. And because they're hosting so many other apps, they've got massive pipes which give you some level uh, denial of service resilience. They won't advertise that, uh, but it, it, it's just a fact. They, they've got big white pipes, uh, which can save you a little bit of money 
which may matter when you're really small. Um, secure coding practices, whenever you're building things, uh, try and use well-known frameworks, always use standards. Don't ever try to rule your own crypto. Um, and in front of your uh, in front of your service, deploy by that firewall. SDLC, anyone who's done any software development hopefully has seen this, which has to do with, are we designing securely? Um, do we know what we're going to be securing? How are things going to attack that? What countermeasures can we deploy? And then how do we sort of, as the community has dictated the best practice, defend against these? What do we do when things go wrong? This is the same thing as we're doing with our business, <coughs> we do with our product from a technical standpoint. All and around and around we go. Um, threat models are sort of just, again, like the threat state. What are my risks? How do I prioritize them? 